What's going on YouTube? It's Anthony from CompSize Studio and welcome back to your third Java Advanced tutorial. So it's been a while again since I made my last tutorial. Um, I had exams and stuff. I know I always have an excuse but I actually did have exams and I was studying hard for those and so I'm gonna try and get you guys a bunch of videos out. I just recovered from a cold. You guys might still notice my voice sounds kinda uh, deep and raspy I guess. So today actually I decided I know in my last tutorial I would said I would work some um, make another tutorial on um, I think it was array lists but actually I decided to do, go on a new topic because I'm sure you guys are sick of array lists by now and I think I taught all I really wanted to for array lists so today we're actually going to be learning a concept called recursion now if you many of you guys probably heard about recursion and heard that it was all hard but actually it's not that bad so Basically, the definition of recursion is a function that calls itself. So, excuse me. Um, so basically, we've made function. I always say functions now because I've been programming in C at school. Whenever I say function, I mean method. Um, basically, they're just interchangeable. Some programming languages call them functions, but in Java, we actually call them methods. So if I say it, my bad, guys. Um, so yeah, basically, recursion is a method that calls itself. So um the major example the main example that they use is um calculating factorials and if you guys don't know what a factorial is i guess i'll teach you so basically it's a notation of five factorial so if we want to take the factorial of five we go five exclamation mark so that's just equal to five times four times three times two times one so again if we had six factorial we would just go six times five times four times three times two times one so it'd be like this um, so yeah, that's basically what factorial is, and um, so yeah, let's make a program using recursion to calculate the factorial of a number. So first off, we're going to want to make a function right outside our main statement, and we'll make it public, and because we are calling this function uh, called recursion, but we're going to call it recursion, since we're calling it in the main method, which is static, we're going to have to label it as a static method public static and it has a return type of integer um, because a factorial always makes a whole number so we're going to call it public static int factorial or let's calculate factorial calculate factorial and we're actually going to make one parameter here so we're going to go int name it whatever you want n um, so basically we're just going to pass in the number through the parameters of the calculate factorial method. Um, so this number is basically whatever number we want to calculate the factorial of. So if we want to calculate 6 factorial, we would pass in 6 here. If we want to calculate 7, it would be 7. Um, so inside of here, we're just going to have an if statement with two cases, actually one case and then the else. So first off, we want to know that if n is exactly equal to 0 this in this case we would return 1 because the factorial of 0 is actually 1 so return 1 so that's basic enough and as you can see we're still getting this red underline but that's all good um, that's just because we need it says here missing return statement uh, we actually do have one but it's not always accessible so it's gonna give us an error so we're gonna have to make an else statement in our else statement, we're going to be returning something as well. And this time, we're going to be returning <clears throat> um, n, which is multiplied by um, 1 less than n. So if we had 5 that came into our parameters up here, we would have 5 multiplied by 1 less than 5, which is 4. And so to do this, we would actually go calculate, calculate factorial and we would go n minus 1 because we want 1 less than n. So this is basically recursion right here in a nutshell. This little call to itself makes this a recursive method. So I know this probably seems all complicated and stuff, but I'm going to run this program and then I'll try and explain it a little better after. So let's run this guy. Oh, of course we need to make a little print statement out in our main method. And we're going to go calculate factorial let's calculate the factorial of 5 because the factorial of 5 I think it's 120 if I remember run it boom we get 120 so now I'm gonna 
kind of walk you guys through this little program here. So all this stuff, we know how to make a print statement, at least I hope you do. If you don't, please go look at my beginner tutorials. Um, <coughs> sorry. And we basically want to print out um, the factorial of 5. So it goes, okay, let's go into this calculate factorial function method, my bad. Go into it, pass in 5 to the parameters. Okay, is 5 equal to 0? Obviously not. So it goes down to this other condition and it goes, okay, let's return 5 times 4. And then it puts 4 into here and then multiplies it by 3, multiplies it by 2, then multiplies it by 1 because it keeps calling itself. Whenever it sees this, okay, um, basically all it's going to do is it's going to call itself again and it's going to multiply it by 1 less than the last one. So if we run this one more time, we calculate the factorial of. Okay, let's run this. Run, run file. Of course, we need to change this value. If we want to calculate the factorial of 3, save it. Obviously, it's going to be 6. It'll basically say, okay, let's go into this function. Is 3 equals 0? Nope. So we'll go 3 times 2. And then I'll put 2 into this fun uh, function and subtract 1. So it passes in 1. Okay, and then it multiplies it by 1 subtracts one off is it equal to zero so it returns one and boom we get six so i know this is a really wonky topic <clears throat> if you don't fully understand it please send me a message email me whatever you want to do i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can <clears throat> but if you don't fully understand this concept it's not that big of a deal because when you're actually making games and um <clears throat> man my throat is really bothering me um if you're making games and stuff you don't use recursion all that much but I just needed to go over it because I know in grade 12, the curriculum actually says that you have to learn recursive functions. At least I needed to learn how to do it. So I just wanted to go over this quickly. And so if you guys have any questions, again, just email me or send me a message or leave a comment in the description below. And I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.